Hey everyone, how are you? It's Joe Lawrence with Business Credit Workshop. All right, <clears throat> so I wanted to do a live today. I had an opening in my schedule. I said, let me take a look at um, some questions that are inside of the group. So let's see. I think um, I think we're in. I think we're live. Um, I got to try to find the feed also. So that, oh, I have it here. Okay, so. If you're watching this live, please comment below. If you're watching this as a replay, let me know that as well. Um, and what I want you to do is in the comments, you can enter <clears throat> any questions that you have about building business credit so I can help you with that. So <clears throat> let me take a look at our group because we did have a question that came in. Um, so let me pull that up. Let's take a second. This is actually a pretty cool question about having um, like good personal credit and like what do you do when you have good personal credit? Do you just PG everything um, and skip you know the process of building or, or what? So just waiting on my computer to load up. So here we go. All right. So Christy asks, and I'll, I'll just read it out. If you have very good credit with no debt and only one credit card. Does personally guaranteeing a business credit card make sense? My answer is yes. It will still report to my business credit bureaus, correct? So sometimes it'll it'll report to business credit bureaus. Some business credit cards don't report anywhere. And then you, you mentioned, I understand the inquiry may drop my personal credit a bit, but I'm personally PGing, I'll probably be given a higher limit. So I don't think your one inquiry will really do much <clears throat> based on personal experience on I could do like five or six inquiries at once and and have a, a small drop in my personal credit. So um, <clears throat> let's see what else you wrote here. <clears throat> my strategy would be to use it responsibly, build and apply for a PG, oh, without a PG in a few months. <clears throat> I don't like the idea of using trade lines because a lot of the stuff's overpriced. Yeah, I mean, so the answer is, um, I, you, Christy, you could definitely skip the process of building. I don't think it's smart though, because if you want to get a higher approval limit or you want to get a, a lower APR, spend the three, 400 bucks or whatever, building up your business credit score, um, boosting up your profile. And you have to look at the, as a business owner, you got to, have to look at the total picture, right? So you don't want to just look at what's in front of you, which is I'm saving a couple hundred bucks on overpriced stuff. But look at the big picture. It, getting twenty five thousand or an extra year of fifty thousand or hundred thousand dollars, what can I do with that money? <clears throat> can I invest that into advertising? Can I put that into my business? Maybe you have a real estate business, maybe you have an e commerce business, or maybe you have to hire employees. Could you do balance transfers and pay off some personal debt? I mean, there's a lot of things you could do with that business credit. So um, that's not what I would recommend to do, but I have plenty of people that do it that'll skip those steps of building the trade lines and they'll still get approvals. You just, you just, I mean, so far this year, it's like almost every time, uh, your approvals won't be as much as someone that actually um, built up their business credit score. So let me look. I'm just making sure uh, on the group. I want. I just pulled up on my phone real quick. I'll see if we have any questions. And if not, I'll just go through some of the um, posts inside of our group and kind of see um, how things are looking. So let me look. All right, cool. We're in, we're in good shape. I don't see any questions as of now. Um, if you do have any questions, just post them as a comment below. I'll I'll answer it live for you right now. Or um, I'll just pay attention to this feed if you're watching the replay for the next 24 hours. Uh, let's see what else we have here. <clears throat> All right. So one of the things I posted recently was about our uh, text message community. Uh, we have a, we have close to 100 people inside that community uh, where I answer questions that you may have via text message. We do exclusive videos and things like that. There's a free option for our text message community. There's also a paid option for the text message community. It just depends on um, if you want group or personal. And um, if you want to learn more about that, the text message community, um, let me know. I'll put the link in the comments here. <clears throat> All right, here's another question that I see here. Um, 
This was a good question, which was uh, from Myron. He says, from the comments I've read in this and other business credit groups, I'm hesitant to apply for WEX. Is this a legitimate concern? So I think WEX has, like WEX, Marathon, BP Gas, Valero. These are good, you know, Shell is another one. These are good business gas cards that you can get that will help boost up your business credit score. And, again, it's big picture versus little picture. So you may have concerns <coughs> or challenges either getting approved or making your payments. I've heard that they're a pain in the butt, you know, to, to get payments done on some of these, um, getting them to report and stuff like that. And I understand that, and I've been through there, that process myself. But what's on the other side of that, right? Um, Les Brown uh, is my favorite motivational speaker, and he always talks about, like, what's on the other side of the pain that you need to go through? So <clears throat> I can understand why you're hesitant, but I would still push through it because what's going to open up to you as a result of getting business credit. So um, <clears throat> I did write uh, an article on our blog, which is businesscreditworkshop.me. There's a little search bar. You could type in the word gas. And the first article that comes up, I think it's about 10 different gas cards that we reviewed. Wex is one of them. And you could look at Wex as well as other options um, <clears throat> when you're choosing a gas card to use. By the way, the BP gas card right now is allowing you to apply without a PG. So you would go through the application and pretty much fail uh, completing it, right? So you don't finish the entire process on on the um, applying for the gas card. <clears throat> and within 24 business hours, you'll get a phone call from a rep and they'll say, hey, we want to get you this BP gas card. And what you could do is say, well, I want it, but I don't want to personally guarantee I want to skip the PG. <clears throat> um, many times that works. Other times you'll have to actually give a deposit. Usually what I've seen is that from clients of mine is the deposit will be like 500 bucks, but then you'll get $1,500 limit. I think it's worth doing that, again, because, um, well, I'm an investor, so I always look at the ROI of something, the return on investment. And, the again, what's on the other side of that is a trade line that's going to report and boost up your business credit score. For those of you that don't know <clears throat> really too much about business credit scores, there's three bureaus that we focus on primarily. It will be Dun & Bradstreet, Equifax Small Business, and Experian Small Business. If you don't already have an account with NAV, it's N-A-V, you want to get an account with NAV, I suggest the Loan Builder. Loan Builder is really good. Yes, it's paid. Um, I'm going to be spending your money very easily. Um, on this live, but you know, it's 50 bucks a month, and what it does is, is it boosts up your business credit score, all three bureaus, Dunham Bradstreet, Equifax, Experian, and secondly, it allows you to track and monitor your, your business credit score. So if you get some gas cards, you get the account with NAV, you get a few other net 30 vendors, you're boosting up your business credit score, which I can tell you firsthand experience, I could see one client get an approval uh, for this much and another client get an approval for this much. And there's lots of factors, of course, that, that play in how much you're going to get as an approval. But one of them is definitely, do you even have a business credit score? I've had banks respond to me in saying the DMB profile was light for this business. That's why we only gave them 25000 when they gave another client $75,000. It's a bank here in New Jersey that does a, a no-doc business line of credit. So um, that's real-world feedback. You know, There's a lot of good information out there, a lot of bad information out there. And what I always tell people is... Do your own research and go straight to the source. Um, so ask the banks themselves if things play a role in the approvals that you're getting. That way you don't even have to listen to me. Right? You don't even have to listen to like do it on YouTube. You can actually get the answer yourself directly by building relationships with the local community banks and credit unions, the vice president of business lending. Um, I have banks in my office all the time, um, I have a credit union that comes here, and they, they just brought me these cool little iPod. Not yeah, right, not an iPod, but um, these little Bluetooth wireless whatever buds. And the reason they they did that is because I've built a relationship with them. I get Christmas cards and stuff from banks and stuff like that, and it all comes down to old school networking building relationships with local community banks, credit unions, building relationships with the VP of business lending, the branch manager. Um, I had one student here in this Facebook group who used to bring, uh, like, donuts um, to one of the banks. I mean, whatever floats your boat, you know. But the point is that by building relationships and, and keeping in touch with these bankers, going out to lunch with them, having their cell phone, connecting on LinkedIn, on Facebook, text messaging, email, whatever it is, um, it's a lot easier 
to get answers to questions when you're confused because there's conflicting information out there on the internet. Obviously, any information I'm sharing with you is it's not just based off the now over 2,000 clients that we have inside of Business Credit Workshop, but also uh, based on my personal experiences of working with these banks. So um, I see one comment. Let's see what we got here. Christy says, um, I have heard some trade lines are not reporting. Is there an updated list with a list of trade lines? I did pay for Business Credit Workshop. Is that somewhere? So I did just cover a few for you here, um, but you could also, if you if you pay for Business Credit Workshop, the updated list is inside of your members portal. I can't share my screen at the moment, Christy, um, but if you want, I'll just share the link on um, here. Uh, as a, I'll just reply to your comment, okay, after the live is done. One other thing, Christy, if you're not already a part of our text message community, um, you should join. You should join up. And I think the link is, let me see if I can do it off the top of my head. I think it's businesscreditworkshop.net slash community. It is. So it's pretty easy. So let's see. I think I can post this as a comment. Okay, I think I just did. So, um, so Christy, if you want, you join our community. Again, there's a free option. There's a paid option. Uh, but either one doesn't matter. I'll still get you the link. Um, I'll put it here on the, on the Facebook so everyone can see it. But if you want um, a little additional support, I mean, it's I liked it. So there's probably people on here right now that are from our text message community, and I really appreciate all of you. I appreciate all of you inside of our Facebook community um, as well. So Chris says, hi from California. Hey, Chris, what's up, man? Um, hope, I hope to see you in September. At, uh, at Funnel Hacking Live, man. Can't wait for that. So let's see what else is going on. Um, if there's any other questions, let me know. I don't know how long I've been live for. 15 minutes? Wow. All right, so let me see if I could find another question. Um, Daryl asks, can we use VoIP, voiceover internet protocol for a business landline? Brandon, who's a student of mine, I uh, said, yes, that's the answer. Now, if you want to know which VoIPs you could use, all of them really work. You could use, uh, I like Freedom Voice. So Freedom Voice has a option to add 411. I think it's a total of about $11 per month, and I think that's really your best, most economical package. I've been using Freedom Voice for over 10 years. Um, so it's, it's a good service. And then, Daryl, what you want to do from there is after you have your phone number, make sure you get it listed. Yellow Pages, Super Pages, Google My Business, all of those services uh, are good, Manta, Yelp, all that, because um, there's, there's two reasons for it. One, a lot of the banks share data with each other, and if your phone number is not 411 listed, if you're not listed on these databases, it's it's a tick. You know, it's like a red flag or a little tick on the application that's not going to get checked off. So it doesn't mean you get denied. It's just if there's 30 things they're looking at, one of them already is off to a bad start. So make sure that you do that. Uh, get your phone number listed. Get your voicemail set up, all that stuff. The second reason is a lot of banks will actually just call you, and they won't talk to you. They'll call you to hang up. So, um, so that's why, you, and they'll Google you too. They'll Google your business. Uh, they'll look at your location too. I don't know if anyone has location questions. We talk about that uh, this week actually about locations and virtual office or physical office. But these are things that bankers are doing. Again, uh, we mostly work with local community banks and credit unions, so they actually are not like. You know, you, we have those big national banks in our database that we could help you get funding with, right? Everyone has that product. But right now, my competitors are having a challenge. And a lot of clients from uh, these two competitors of mine, they're coming over to me and they're saying that they've exhausted the three banks, you know, and then they, you know, maybe some of them have up to 15, 10, whatever. Okay. But just recently this week, clients signed up with our services because he exhausted the three banks that, that the very large, uh, competitor of mine offered and that's and that's fine I had those banks too right but what makes our service unique what makes my training unique is let's go find these local community banks these credit unions that are in your neighborhood you drive around you see them you don't know what they offer but you want to give them a call you want to see what products they offer because they're local community banks because they're credit unions they're not necessarily a national bank with an automated underwriting process it's a little more manual um, they oftentimes will call you and Google your company. So, Daryl, good question about the boy. Make sure you use um, a listing service 
or you manually list your phone number on all the different databases. Uh, make sure your voicemail is set up and everything like that. I'm going to double check if there's any more questions. Uh, Michelle has a question. I'm a new freight broker business owner, one year in. I've got a business account with Navy, all necessary licenses, Dunn's number, brick and mortar location. Wow. Just opened with Quill. Not sure what to do next. <laughs> uh, to acquire business credit. Help. LOL. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let me. All right. So you got the company. You got a good location. You got your business checking account. You got your Dunn's number. You got one trade line. So I would get um, a couple of gas cards, especially because you're in the freight industry. I would get the paid NAV account. That's N A V. So go to nav.com, sign up for their loan builder program. That'll boost up your business credit score and also allow you to see your business credit scores. And then, then what, right? Okay, so now at that point, you have you have you have a couple options, right? What you can do if you want is simply start to call local community banks and credit unions in your area and see what programs they have. You're not necessarily ready to apply yet, but by making those phone calls, you're gonna start to find people and bankers that are offering programs that uh, you probably never heard of because they don't really have an advertising budget, right? It's not often that you're going to see these programs on a pamphlet or on a website. So you want to start calling these banks old school phone, you know, call them, or you can email too, but I think phone is the best option. F find out what programs they have. Visit these local banks. Um, and put together a list of like five or six banks you want to open business checking accounts with that you want to establish relationships with. Um, so that when you're ready and, and your business credit scores are on par and your personal credit scores are on par, you could then uh, apply for uh, business credit. If you want more training on that topic, I have two options for you. It's always going to be free <clears throat> and paid, right? So free, go to youtube.com, type in uh, business credit workshop. You know, I'll give you a link to that. I have a seven-part series <clears throat> on um, on YouTube. It's free, and you can see like step one, step two, step three. So if you're like me and you, and you want like just break it down for me step by step, that's the link here. I just put it in the chat to our YouTube channel, and you can go on there and just follow step one through seven. What exactly you want to do? Second option would be um, if you wanted uh, our e-course. We also have an e-course where. Uh, we have video training modules, worksheets, um, support, and things like that. If you need like a little bit beyond the free help, then you can go to businesscreditworkshop.net and you can grab our course there. It's only $37, so pretty good deal. And um, I'll give you the link to that as well, so you can kind of pick what flavor you like. All right, these are good questions. Um, you know, I'll always stay on. Uh, as long as they're coming in. So if you have any other questions, let me know. I'm going to scroll through the group. Just make sure I didn't miss anything good. What net 30? Okay, we talk about that a lot. Uh, B. Daryl asked, best sources of information on an LLC. How do you pay yourself from one? I use Gusto. I use payroll service and a CPA, certified public accountant. And it's taxable, obviously, any member draws or salary or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, just have your CPA help you or just use a payroll company. Uh, let me see if there's any more. I don't see any more questions. So um, I hope this helps. Again, if you're watching this live, um, you know, hit that like button, hit that heart button. And if you're watching this as a replay, just let me know in the comments below. Just I like the kind of next 24 hours. I want to check things out and kind of see how things are going. If you have any more questions, I'll pay attention to this feed for a little bit longer. Um, but with that, thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend, and go get the funding that you deserve. Bye-bye.